I have here next to me Pam Crowd. She's the <laughs> author <laughs> of, of this book and 15 or 16 other books. I just finished my 17th book called E Cubes, a follow-up to this book that has been translated into 33 languages. People have loved this one so much, so they want the second book. So E Cubed is, came out in English three, four weeks ago in the United States. Yeah. So. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And anyway, there's a lot of books. And now we are here in Finland. You just uh, finished your lecture here. And that was inspiring. And I can hear many things from there that I, I get uh, excited. And also many things that I believe. I think you're, uh, what, what you have written is actually really simple stuff. And that, I think that is good. So um, my first question, what is the most important thing in this book? I think if people can really get it, that the universe wants to bless them, that there is a force for good that loves them, a benevolent force that loves them, that is wanting to bestow blessings upon them. Most people don't believe that. They believe the world's out to get them. They believe it's difficult, that life's hard. So if you can really get it, that joy is your natural state and that the universe wants to bless you, that's all you need to know. The rest takes care of itself. <laughs> This, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, in this book you've told about nine tests that uh, mm -hmm. will uh, prove that your thoughts will uh, create mm -hmm. your reality. Mm -hmm. um, so do you, do you think, is there any of the tests more important than another one? Well, What's your favorite? Again, yeah. you know, people ask me that. I like all of them, and I think they're all important to know. But again, that first one, the first one and the ninth one are really important. The first one is that there is this invisible energy force that has your back. I mean, that's basically what the first one says. So if you get that and you really believe it's benevolent and loves you, that's a good thing. And the last one is that the world is infinite, loving, and strangely accommodating. And I mean, in some ways they're similar, but if you can get both of those principles, your life will work. You know, once you let go of all the, uh, the mental constructs that everybody has as they exist in their life. One of the things that I wanted to ask is, is there some kind of person that you wanted to uh, uh, write this book for? You know, I think it's been interesting to me. People have loved it from, I've got everything from nine-year-old girls writing to me and saying, you and J.K. Rowling are my favorite authors, to, you know, 80-year-old women that are saying, why didn't I know this 30 years ago? So, so it's, it surprised me, and a lot of men read it, because typically these kind of books tend to attract more women. And I do say this one has too, but there's a lot of guys. So really across the board, this book has appealed to people from all, I mean, again, 33 languages. I mean, people in Croatia are <laughs> learning these <laughs> principles. So it's amazing to me that it really is kind of a universal message. And to me, it is actually truth with a capital T. This is the way it's supposed to work. Life is miraculous and beautiful. And that is what I want everyone to know. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, mission. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. So is there any time uh, that kind of situation that you doubt the, these tests or these ideas that you have written? Uh, well, I've said this several times that um, if I had have had any doubts before I wrote the book, they have been completely wiped away because every day I open my email and get these amazing stories from people about how they're using these principles to better their lives. So this, I mean, this book has helped me as much as anybody else because I get to hear these stories all the time. So now, no doubts whatsoever. And I think as, as I'm more open to this joy and this natural state of living, my life's just taken off. So I, I did something kind of funny on New Year's Eve of going into 2013, and the book was coming out January 23rd. I went to a beach. Um, in, in Georgia where my sister lives. We were celebrating New Year's Eve. And I wrote with a big stick in the beach, E squared will become a big international bestseller. And then the waves came in and took it out to the universe. And as I said in EQ, well, you know, a billboard might have been more effective marketing-wise, but this really worked. It's like I sent that energy out to the universe and it came back that way. Every, you know, it's, everybody's just crazy about this book. So anyway, that's just one kind of fun thing that I did with the book. So what we, what we believe and what we're willing to accept, because we're already connected to everything, and so what we let into our sphere of awareness is what we're focusing upon. And we animate into our life whatever we put our attention upon. So if we put our attention on the problems in our life and the problems in our world, then we'll get more problems. But if we put our attention on this idea of blessings and miracles, we animate that reality into our lives. That's good. So, 
second part of my original question oh, yeah. was what do you do when you doubt these things but I think you already told it that you you hear the stories and then you for me I don't have too many doubts anymore but I, I remember those days and and that's what's kind of cool about this book I'm not asking anybody to believe this like I'm not saying you should believe this because I say so no I'm saying try this out in your own experience if you can see it with your own two eyes so it's really a test I think dogmas and all the things people try to tell us you know that's that's d unimportant how's it work for you how's it working for you like we had this saying in the US how's that working out for you yep. <laughs> and so anyway that's like okay this this is a way to see it with your own twice so try it see if it works see what happens yep and actually I just heard from my friend that uh, the best thing of this book was that uh, the belief or the faith that she got from it mm -hmm. that this really works and how um, sometimes you don't get everything immediately mm -hmm. but it gives you faith that it will come right yeah. I, what, what you know I put the little 48 hour time frame on it because it jars us into paying attention it's not that we're really giving the universe oh you have to do it like this we're saying I'm gonna pay attention for the next 48 hours and see what comes and it just is a way of us switching we're the ones that block it we're the ones that need to change our vision and what we're seeing so so that's what, it, what I'm doing more with the 48 hours you, you said about blocking so mm -hmm. is that the, that we are the biggest ob obstacle in using these uh, ideas or right our mental architecture we were taught from the time a little I don't know if you heard that story I told about the little boy the little baby mm -hmm. because what happens is we're quickly taught when we're born we watch what our parents like we learn this is fun this is this is not fun this is bad this is good we learn all this we pick we come out as these giant love sonar I mean that's babies are just born pure love and then they've got to get their message across so you know they figure out how to do it but they also watch their parents they watch the people around them and so you learn these messages this is the way it is this is what we allow in and before long we're all just walking lockstep with the culture and the way we're taught the world is and that's kind of what happens so yep yeah. okay. there's something that you forget from this book that's supposed to be in this book but it, it's not there that you can oh. uh, um, because uh, I do myself also video mm -hmm. courses and many stuff I write a lot, lot of stuff mm -hmm. and every time when I get finished something oh. I get this idea this supposed to be there so I, I, I think you might have something similar you know actually no because from this book I created a blog and so anytime something like that would come up I do this blog it's you know pamgrat.com and I've since I've written the book I've written like 325 blog posts so if anything comes up that I think should have been in there I put it in my blog and then I also just wrote a cube which is a follow-up book so anything I might have forgotten so I'm it's definitely no I don't have that sense of that I feel this is a really complete and perfect book just the way it is but I feel there's much more to be said I think these are baby steps and that's kind of what the continuing work is that's what the you know the blogs all about and that's what the uh, the next books about so yeah exactly you have always uh, more books coming that's right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely amazing that you came here for this in interview and thanks for the book yeah on behalf of me and uh, so many other people that are really loving it so thank you for coming to Finland. Yes. And thank you for the interview. Yeah, thank you. Kitos. <laughs> <laughs> Kitos, I learned that word for sure. <laughs>